Good evening and welcome to the Chris Nelsado Show here on Newsmax TV. A big thank you to Tom Basile, Joe Pinion, and John Bachman for taking care of all of you, my beloved audience, while I was away on vacation. Got a lot of catching up to do on this past week, but before we dive into all of that, I want to tell you a little bit about my time off. The Salcedo Show is relatively new to Newsmax TV, but those of you who listen to the Chris Salcedo Show on radio know I don't keep a lot of stuff from my audience. Many of you have related to me just how much this show means to all of you, but I can attest that this audience, both on TV and radio, has helped me through some pretty darn times throughout the years, mostly of a political nature. Your calls, your emails, and letters have been an unrelenting source of encouragement for me. You have reaffirmed that we are a people worth saving. Why we fight, a father's reflections in tonight's preamble. As part of my vacation, I had to undertake a ritual that many of you parents and grandparents have had to endure or will endure, saying goodbye to a child as they embark on a new adventure in life. Some kids move out to get their own place. Others go to college. Others leave for boot camp to defend our great nation. I had to drop off my child to college. I don't mind telling you that this was something that I was dreading. For months, drop-off day stalked me. Even as I and my wife were undertaking this task, I still couldn't bring myself to believe that it was actually happening. When my baby was born, I never once considered that I would one day take this child to a place I had never been and just leave my child there. If you think about it, it goes against every instinct a parent has. You know, I never realized how much that bedroom light in the room down the hall allowed me to get a good night's sleep. That light was a confirmation that my baby was home, safe, under my protection. One is never really quite prepared to make that trek down the hall and see nothing but a dark room there. For a while, I, I thought I was the only one feeling the loss that was to come. You know, my, my kid was ebullient with excitement over the new adventure ahead. Mrs. Salcedo, upon seeing my sadness and trepidation about drop-off day, was quick to point out that this is why we had kids, so that we could teach them as best we could, and then to have them fly out of the proverbial nest and strike out on their own to, to build their own lives. Of course, she was right. And she almost had me convinced that I was the one overreacting until the week before we left for vacation when one night I turned over in bed to hear her crying. Believe it or not, I was actually relieved. <laughs> it, was, it wasn't just me. So the big day came. My wife and I got our child settled, and I told that child two things. First, how proud I was. Secondly, I said, make good decisions. Then we flew away from that college town to our vacation. Let me tell you that I, I needed every minute of my vacation to process drop-off day. And anti-American airlines did their part, canceling a record number of flights, making sure that layovers lasted way longer than promised, as stated, lots of time to sort things out. But in the final analysis, I reevaluated how I'd approach this show from here on out. This new stage in my family's life has focused me, perhaps like never before, into saving the greatest country that God has given man so that my children can at least have as good a life as I had. Now, we think about it, that's what all good parents want, right? Recent Rasmussen poll revealed that just one-third of Americans think that the founding fathers would approve of Joe Biden's America, with out-of-control inflation, soaring gas prices, and three illegal immigration crises afflicting these United States, who can blame them? An equally disturbing poll shows that the socialist domination of our schools is cranking out generations of kids who hate the United States of America, their own country. Only one-third of U.S. adults ages 18 to 24 are proud to be Americans. That's not how it should be. This last bastion of freedom can't survive with numbers like that. We just marked American Independence Day, the 4th of July. This is how patriots marked the holiday in Hazlitt, Texas. God bless Texas. That wasn't a sporting event, my friends. It was in the middle of a Walmart. People who were so filled with patriotism, they couldn't help but sing. Conversely, this is how left-wing states and cities marked the foundation of our 
nation of laws. The July 4th weekend featured at least 118 people being shot in Chicago and New York City combined. This is a result of left-wing extremists who are defunding our police, disarming the law-abiding, and going soft on criminals. These are the same people injecting critical race theory into our nation's GovEd schools. This idiocy, anti-Americanism, and dangerous rhetoric and actions are what lead to Know Nothing Squad member Cori Bush to declare that blacks are not free in the United States. She did this, of course, to, dis to sow division. She lied to create a race war, and she did so on the weekend that celebrated the United States of America. And we won't be united for long, so long as anti-American leftists have power in the USA. After dropping off my child at college, I became more determined than I have ever been to defeat those who wish to do our nation and my children's future harm. And that's why we fight. I know my words will do little to convince you socialists and communists out there, but I'm hoping I, as a conservative, can reach you Republicans, you independents, and however many of you Democrats who still believe in this last beacon of freedom in the world. Now is the time to come off the sidelines. Now is the time to preserve all that we've built together. And to the aforementioned communists and socialists, I say this. For the sake of the next generation and for generations yet unborn, a coalition is building out there as dedicated to saving the United States of America as you are dedicated to destroying it. Now, let's get to your top stories. The woke not the military, folks, the woke It is dangerous. It's an existential threat, and we'll go over it here in this program. Critical race theory is making America China. <laughs> Wait until you hear some of the critique of that anti-American curriculum. And challenging Governor Greg Abbott of Texas. That's our top story tonight. My next guest just launched a primary challenge against Texas Governor Greg Abbott. And joining me now, outgoing chairman of the Republican Party of Texas and former congressman, retired Lieutenant Colonel Alan West. Colonel, it's always wonderful to see you. When we last spoke, you had not decided and whether or not you were going to run, but over the 4th of July holiday, you said you were going to run for Texas governor. What prompted you to uh, go ahead and throw your hat in the ring? Well, thanks. It's good to be with you, Chris. And if I could, based upon your opening monologue, I want to remind you of Proverbs 22, 6, where it says, train up a child in the way that they should go, so that when they grow old, they shall not depart from it. So I'm quite sure that you did an exceptional job, you and your wife, to make sure that no matter where your child is, they will honor the United States of America and the service and sacrifice and commitment of so many generations so that he can go to college and live in this great, incredible nation. And with that being said, one of the reasons that you just talked about, getting off the sideline, why do we fight? Why do we make the stand? When you see what is happening here in the great state of Texas all across America, and that's what I said in my announcement video, I've not been in an elected office. Some people may say state chairman is elected office, but a real political elected office for 10 years. And I cannot sit back and I see my daughters and my new grandson who was just born on the 18th of May, I got to leave something better for them. And after I announced on Sunday, I went down to the border to Roma, Texas, and I was out all night there in Roma, Texas, and there's a video out there that shows exactly what I saw happening at 2 a.m. in the morning when a gentleman yelled from across the Mexican side of the Rio Grande River that I have 80 people ready to come across. And those human smugglers loaded up people in rafts and walked them across the Rio Grande River, which was about uh, waist deep at the time, and brought them into the state of Texas. This is an existential threat to the sovereignty of the United States of America, the sovereignty of this free and independent state, because that's what the founders said in the Declaration of Independence that we call Texas. And we have got to make sure that we have the right type of leadership at the state level that will stand up to the federal government when they have abdicated their constitutional duty and responsibility. Let's talk about the man whose job you want to take. The biggest domestic disaster, as you were just outlining, facing Texas and our nation, really, the three illegal immigration crises started by Joe Biden. Governor Abbott is, is pushing back uh, mutual aid agreements with other states, increased law enforcement officers coming from those states, finishing the wall, opening up a, a bank to fund and allow other patriots to contribute to the wall's construction. Isn't he doing a good job with an openly hostile and anti-Texas Biden administration? 
Well, if you go to westfordtexas.com, and that's four, as in the number four, texas.com, you'll see the video that was shot at 2 a.m. in the morning from Roma, Texas, right there on the banks of the Rio Grande River. We have three National Guard troops that were right there. They did nothing to deter or to stop the 80 illegal immigrants that I saw being ferried into the state of Texas. As a matter of fact, they just kind of stood back and watched and gathered them together, and then they walked them up the hill to, I guess, a DHS bus, which took them to a detainment facility. We need to have a full mobilization of our National Guard. It's not about building a border wall. You can put a full mobilization of our National Guard on the border right now. It is not about having uh, people come from other states. We can stand up and do this ourselves. We need to start taxing the remittances of these illegal immigrants that go back to these other states, which really does fuel their GDP. And that could be used as a border security fund instead of asking Texas taxpayers to uh, supply this and then also creating a GoFundMe account. And then we've got to declare these cartels a criminal and terrorist organization. And guess what, Chris? If we do that, then we can go after the banks. We can go after their assets that are here in the state of Texas. We can go after these real estate agencies and banks that are funding these stash houses. And so those are the type of things that I'd like to see done, not just talking points about building a wall. Texas has uh, other obstacles as well. Reliable power generation, property taxes through the roof, taxpayer-funded lobbying, and unaccountable government-run schools. Huge issues in the state of Texas. How are you going to address those things specifically? Well, let's talk about property taxes. And it is unconscionable to me that here in the state of Texas, we have a system of taxation that is really based upon Karl Marx's communist planks in the Communist Manifesto. Number one, it's a progressive income tax, and it's a tax that is against your property. And Karl Marx talked about the elimination of private property. And that's exactly what you have here in Texas, in that you can never truthfully own your home as long as taxation is uh, levied against your property. And think about, you know, the Declaration of Independence talked about life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. It was John Locke, the uh, real father of classical liberalism, that said the inalienable rights that came from naturalized theory was life, liberty, and property. And here we don't allow people to own their property. So I think, first and foremost, we start looking at how we reduce the size and scope and the expansion of the state government. We can turn those funds that we save back to property tax reduction. But we've got to go back and start looking at the original form of taxation we had in America before we were taxing people based upon their income. It was a consumption-based tax. And I'd like to sit down and put together an economic team, and we can start looking at how we can bring a consumption-based tax here to the state of Texas so that Texans can own their own home. Yeah, and on the... On the taxpayer-funded lobbying, a lot of folks out there don't know this, but in the state of Texas, the taxpayers have to fund lobbyists to, uh, to go to Austin to squeeze more money out of them to screw over the taxpayers even more. It, it's, a, it's a slap in the face, and over 90 percent of Republicans in the state of Texas wanted it gone, but the legislature fought to keep it because of cronyism, I, I suppose. What could you do as governor to get rid of it? And how does that parlay into the discussion that you and I had earlier on radio about uh, school choice? Well, this is what we would call in the military a self-licking ice cream cone, that you have uh, people that are elected into office that take taxpayer dollars and then they go to lobbyists and they give them those taxpayer dollars to lobby against the constituents that voted them into office. And so when I think about 90 some odd percent of Republicans said they wanted an end to taxpayer funded lobbying, but yet what do you have? You have a Republican controlled majorities in the House, in the Senate, a Republican governor, a lieutenant governor, and we did not end taxpayer funded lobbying. And it goes back to this slush fund that the governor has here, this Texas Enterprise Fund of taxpayer dollars that is doled out to corporations to get them to come to Texas. That's corporate and government cronyism. And even both parties, Republican and Democrats, having their platform to end corporate welfare programs. And how does that affect everyday Texas? Well, I think uh, people want to be able to make the right decisions as far as educating their children. Well, guess who defeated school choice? You had lobbyists that were hired on behalf of certain independent school districts that lobbied against citizens here in Texas who wanted to see school choice. And so it died. Yeah. Last thing, Missouri Congresswoman Cori Bush sparked a lot of outrage over the Independence Day weekend for tweeting this. This land is stolen and black people still aren't free. <laughs> uh, 
This is the same woman who is pushing to defund police but hires armed guards to protect her worthless rear end. Your response, Mr. Chairman? Well, Cora Bush is delusional, and if anything, she should be in jail. Cora Bush led violent uh, rallies, and you see right there on the screenshot, against innocent civilians, uh, Patty and Mark McCloskey in St. Louis. And she was also the head of a violent uh, march that ended with the, the uh, death of David Dorn, a police officer that we saw bleeding out on camera. She should not be sitting in Congress. She should not be on the House Judiciary Committee. I am a black man that was born in 1961 in a blacks-only hospital in Atlanta, Georgia. And look at where I am today. I am talking to Chris Salcedo on Newsmax TV and announced my candidacy to be a governor in the state of Texas. That's what America is all about, the equality of opportunity and not this victimization, not the equality of outcomes that Cori Bush would like to advance. Amen. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Alan West, it is always a pleasure talking with you, my friend. We will talk again soon. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.